Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you the feature or at least one of the main features that makes NoSQL databases so fast. And even though you can say it is a benefit, it's also a bit of a byproduct of how NoSQL databases are scaled and distributed. And in this video I'm going to be using DynamoDB to showcase this feature. However, if you're using any other NoSQL database, MongoDB, Raven, CosmosDB, they all have the exact same feature in some capacity because it's just a fundamental thing in NoSQL databases. And that feature is optimistic locking. Now, what is optimistic locking? Well, I'm going to show you what it is with the implementation. But to give you an idea, NoSQL databases, just because of how they are distributed, they don't really have by default the same guarantees that RDBMSs were designed from the very beginning to have. So things like atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, the ACID acronym, it's either not there fully or it is there, but the database is bending the rules a bit to make it work. And I want to show you one of those examples. Now, this video is sponsored by AWS. And if you want to know how to get $50 of free credit, check the link down in the description. But the knowledge you want to get from this video can be applied to basically any NoSQL database. So let me show you what I have here. I have a movies API, which allows me, as you can see over here, to create a movie in a database. I get it by its ID or its slug. The slug is the URL friendly version. So if someone comes, let's say, on a Rotten Tomatoes page or an IMDb page and they use the movie name hyphen year of release, then this will also return it. Uh, then we can update a movie by ID and then we can delete a movie ID. Your basic CRUD API, but this is all using Amazon DynamoDB as you can see over here. So if we go into the service, we have some basic validation. We have all our uh, read code, which as you can see includes the slug index as well that we need and so on. It's pretty basic stuff. Now, just in case you don't have the table, if you want to try this out as well, uh, you can go over here and search for DynamoDB. We're going to go ahead and just create the table. So create table. It's called movies. The partition key is an ID. We're not going to use a sort key in this case. And then we're going to customize the settings a bit because we do need an index to allow the database to return data both on the ID and the slug. And by the way, if you want to know about this in more detail, there's a free course on Dome Train on AWS. We'll grab the link in the description down below. It's going to teach you all that and way, way more. Uh, but then I'm going to say that the slug in this index is the partition key. I'm going to create that index. And then I'm just going to say uh, create table. Now I'm going to have my table created and I can go back to my code and run this application and show you how everything comes together. So let's say run the app and then I'm going to go to Insomnia. I'm going to create the classic movie Nick the Greek from 2019. Let's go ahead and say create. And as you can see, it is created. I can go ahead and retrieve it if I want. So get movie by ID or even by slug. So I can say 2019 and I'm going to get it. I can use the ID as well. So let's send this and then returns. If it's a wrong ID, I'm getting a 404 as any other REST API and so on. So Pretty basic stuff. Now, what is the problem we have? Well, consider we have many users in the system and what they might do as they add or update movies in a database is they retrieve the movie, they change something about it, and then they write it. Now, what if, and I'm going to show you, it's basically this update over here. Now, what if two users at the same time read the same movie and they try to update it. Well, in a relational database, because of how locking works by default, and if you've seen any no lock statements, or I think it's read uncommitted in MariaDB or MySQL, then you know that those hints let the database know that the reason why maybe I'm reading this is not to update, so don't lock it. But in NoSQL databases, there's not necessarily that functionality by default. Two users can read the exact same movie, they can update it, and they can write it at the same time. And it doesn't matter who read it first. If the one who read it first and said update has a blip in the network, and there's a small delay between reading it and writing it, but the second one, the one that read it after, that also has the same read, commits it, and there is no blip in the network, that second one, even though technically it was supposed to come after, it will be overridden by the first one because these databases by default have no locking and they commit the last value that was written to them. It doesn't matter. Last read wins. Now, this can be fine in some cases and you can make an argument that 
that's why append only databases and event sourcing is amazing because you wouldn't have this problem but in many cases this is a problem we need to solve imagine if the reason why you're writing something in the database is not a movie but it is to display the account balance on your account like a, a materialized view of all of your transactions that wouldn't be good so how do these databases solve this well with optimistic locking what does that mean? Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just released two brand new courses on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero Git and From Zero to Hero GitHub Actions. And they're two amazing courses authored by Scott Sober, who's extremely experienced in both topics. Now, you might think you know those topics, but trust me, the way Scott teaches them and the way he has dedicated sections on how to deal with things going wrong on each topic is extremely, extremely valuable. As I was reviewing it, I learned so much myself. Now, to celebrate the launch, the first 200 of you can use discount code GIT30 at checkout to get 30% off. Now, back to the video. Well, what I'm going to say conceptually is that, hey, I'm reading this movie over here in the beginning of the request. My request may be started on this time. As I'm writing it, I want to make sure that the thing I read is the thing I'm actually writing on top of. Now, different databases do this with different ways. For example, Cosmos DB has an E tag, an entity tag, and you can have an if match. And by the way, this concept also exists in web requests and caching. You might have seen it already, but the E tag is effectively a version that changes every time the object in the database changes and it's dictated by the database in Cosmos DB. In DynamoDB, you can actually have conditions. So if we go to the movie object, you can see that we have a last updated UTC parameter. So what I can do is I can say, I'm going to read the movie. And if the last updated UTC does not match what I read as I'm writing it on the database level, then fail that request. And this is a very, very powerful tool because it means that for most of the use cases where this doesn't matter, databases can be faster because they don't have to have as many guarantees. But when you really need them, you proactively say, I need this lock here. Let's go ahead and implement it with optimistic locking. And before I show you the implementation very quickly, I want to show you the problem in action. So I've already added the movie in the database. And if I read it over here, as you can see, I have it. And if I go ahead and say, hey, I want to update this movie and I want to update this movie to be of the year 2022, not 2019, as it is right now in the database. So I'll go here and say 2020. Now, I'm actually going to say that I want to have a delay over here. So I'm going to delay this for 10 seconds and hot reload. So I don't need to restart my application. And then I'm going to have my table ready because I want to go in manually and just change the value to show you that my change that I make manually over here is being overridden. So the document exists over here 2019, as you can see. I'm going to say run this request. Now we're going to wait 10 seconds there. I'm going to change this to 2021 and just say save this object. So this object is now saved. But if I go back to Insomnia, as you can see, and when I reload, so reload over here, then that value has been overridden and nothing in my application crashed because it's completely unaware that someone else came in and changed it in the meantime. So how do we fix this? Well, in DynamoDB, this is fixable using a condition expression. So you can have a complicated or simple condition to say, if this is true, then this right is acceptable. If it is not, then poop. And how do we do that? Well, we go into the update item request, and this exists on create and so on, uh, or delete as well. And we can have a condition expression, which is just a string. Now, the syntax can be a bit weird in DynamoDB, but the way it works is I'll go to the movie. I'm going to find the name of the parameter I want to compare. So it's the last updated UTC, which is saved as a string. And it is a sortable string because it's the ISO um, to string O. And I can say that the last updated UTC must be the same as the last updated UTC parameter. That's why I'm going to give it a, a lowercase l because that is a different value. And where is this parameter coming from? Well, I'm going to say expression attribute values and then create that attribute. So last updated UTC, I'm going to take it, pass it here and say that the attribute value is movie exists, the one I read when I wanted to make sure it does exist. So attribute value exists, last updated UTC to string uh, in the same format. And that is it. And now 
watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and just run this again. And I go back to Insomnia and I'm going to say, okay, now this is a 2022 movie and updated. And everything works. Nothing changed very quick. 2018 again. And you can see blazing fast. We have our updates happening. I'm going to go back and add this 10 second delay. I'm going to say await task dot delay 10 seconds and I'm going to hot reload and then I'll go to the database again, read this value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the last updated UTC, which is updated every time I update this value. I'm going to go to Insomnia and say that this is now a 2023 movie. I'm going to say send. This is going to wait for 10 seconds. I'm going to go and change this to 10 seconds later and save. And then I'm going to go back to Insomnia. And as you're going to see, the whole thing now crashed because the conditional check failed and it threw an exception. That of course happened because the condition we have over here was not met. So the database said, hey, you want me to only write this if this condition is true and it's not true. So I'm going to reject your right, which of course then means that I can come here and add a try catch for that exception. And there is many ways that people handle this exception, by the way, there isn't a single way. Some people try to just move the cursor basically back to the beginning of the method and retry the entire flow. This is very common in event source systems because basically what happened is an event was appended and the view you saved is not the same anymore. So you have to recalculate that view of that projection. In our case, we're just going to reject the right and I'm going to say that, hey, what happened was that this resource was updated since you read it or while you were updating it by someone else. And if we do that, I'm going to go back over here and debug it. Then in Insomnia, I will say again, yeah, update this to 2023. I actually wanted go back here, change it again, say save and then go back to Insomnia. And as you're going to see, we're going to get a validation error failed concurrency. This resource was updated since you read it. If I do it again now and I actually don't do anything in DynamoDB and I do wait for the 10 seconds, which I have to talk over because 10 seconds is a very long time. Then as you're going to see, this is all allowed. So this is one of the great features of NoSQL databases that allow us to get incredible performance for a system that is distributed. But now I want to know from you, were you aware of this optimistic locking and are you using something else in your own database? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.